Should we start with number one, Georgia? <laughs> <laughs> Love the 8-bit version. Yeah, let's start with Georgia. Yeah, Georgia. Georgia's interesting, right? So Georgia's schedule the rest of the way is Missouri in week 10, Ole Miss in week 11, on the road at Tennessee in week 12, and then at Georgia Tech. Who knows what we got with Georgia Tech at this point to close things out week 13, all in advance of what I think we'd assume is the conference championship game, maybe against Alabama. We're going to have to wait and find out more. I will say, despite the fact that they looked damn impressive this past week against Florida with Carson Beck having full command of the offense, never once flustered, they ran away and hid, won that game 43-20. to I look at the schedule, and it it's a formidable schedule. That's not to say that Georgia won't run roughshod over all of these teams in front of them, but um, like Missouri's not a bad team. Ole Miss is not a bad team. Tennessee on the road, you could see that point spread being inside of 10. Hypothetically challenging. Hypothetically challenging. The Georgia Tech game, I'm sorry, Georgia Tech people, I won't pay that one um, a whole lot of mind. And then there's the conference championship game. When we did this exercise at the start of the year and we previewed Georgia's schedule, we said this sets up really, really well for them. I don't think otherwise, but I will say in terms of icebergs, there are certainly iceberg opportunities here. Going on the road to play Tennessee in Neyland Stadium, that's an iceberg for pretty much anybody that has to go and participate in that game. It's just a tough place to play. So I feel like, you know, if I'm grading Georgia compared to what I thought at the start of the year, I think more yeah. icebergs now than I thought four months ago. Really? I do. Which one is the most pronounced? Which one is the most dangerous to you? And I'll let, I'll even let you include a, a potential SEC championship matchup against Alabama or LSU, even though that seems more obvious. So of these four, yeah. which is the most obvious? The Even though it probably, of the big three, let's say, Missouri, Ole Miss, Tennessee on the road, of those three games, even though I think the Tennessee point spread will be lowest, and I think the Ole Miss point spread will be lower than the one this week against Mizzou, I actually think Mizzou is the bigger threat because Mizzou, okay. Mizzou played him tight last year in a very odd game in Columbia. And this is a team that has gotten better throughout the course of the year. They're like the 20th best team, depending on where you want to look. They play sound defense. Their offense has a fair amount of balance to it. And I got to believe that Eli Drinkwitz is going to have them really fired up to play this game on the road. So they're a 16-point dog. I expect Georgia to win. I, I do think Mizzou finds a way to kind of keep this one within the number. Okay. I mean, that's reasonable. And so, yeah, they're, they're both... I mean, Mizzou is coming off of a bye. Georgia is not ahead of it. So that's a nice little advantage for the Tigers. And Mizzou is taking care of business. So it's a double-digit win against Tennessee, a double-digit win against South Carolina. They were driving to beat LSU uh, until they threw... until Brady Cook threw that pick that's six. Right. Um, so the results have been there. And you have the bye week. If the game were in Columbia, I think I'd like it more. But I... I tend to agree, even though the Mizzou defense isn't where it was these last couple of years, I think they appear to be the most complete team. I just, I, I, I hesitate, man. I guess it, I get, I, it's, it's the pick, I think. Yeah. Uh, Tennessee has been too inconsistent. Ole Miss has been fine and a good team, but I just don't see Lane Kiffin in big games no. as being that guy. Um, I don't know. I think I'm going Mizzou. I think Mizzou's the answer, and and by the way, that doesn't really talk much about the potential matchup, I think, with Alabama, I guess we would say, out of the West. Um, Georgia, I think, is a much more rounded football program at this point than Alabama. Alabama has improved. Alabama still has the same questions as before. I think Jalen Milroe has gotten better. I think the offense has adapted around him, but... If you're putting me Alabama against Georgia, I still take Georgia. Yeah, as do I. Still take Georgia. All right, let's go to Michigan, Dan. Let's. Let's talk about your Michigan. <laughs> you don't have to play so it every good. time. It's okay. It is a good It is a good sound, though. I like it. Let's talk Michigan. Michigan the rest of the way. Purdue this weekend on the... Stop you right there. Purdue. Pur yeah, right. No. <laughs> on the road at Michigan. Or no. Jeez. On the road at Penn State. On the road at Penn State, on the road at Maryland, close out the year, of course, that game against Ohio State. Biggest iceberg for you. It's It's got to be Ohio State to me. Even though that game is at home, I, I need a complete team to beat Michigan. And I 
if we are putting everything off the field, but near the field, <laughs> allegedly, aside from Michigan, with a plain view of a sideline, um, I think it's Ohio State just because the combination of offensive firepower at its best and a defense that's been quite good and certainly a game that's been fraught with emotion, even though Michigan's won the past couple of years, I still have it as Ohio State because if you offered me Kyle McCord and Marvin Harrison and a questionable offensive line or uh, Drew Aller and uh, KLS, I don't know who, who you're talking about in terms of that danger and a questionable offensive line and a home crowd, mind yep. you. But with with what look to be both excellent defenses, I think I'm going to go with Ohio State there. Not giving any... Uh, should we spend time talking about Michigan-Iowa and the Big Ten Championship? <laughs> should, we, should we spend time there? I've got a point spread in front of me if you're curious. I'm pretty sure we had that two years ago. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Was it forty two to three <laughs> being the final there? What do you think the points for me? I've got a I've got a calculation in front of me. I don't think this is So this is the tie model. This is the tie model. The model T, if you model will. T. Um I think Michigan would be favored by seventeen and a half. Twenty four. Twenty four. Jeez. Twenty four points. Which I think is fair. Look, Iowa doesn't score any points. You gotta score some points to beat Michigan. For as much as it pains me to say the answer, uh the answer is Ohio State here. The answer is clearly Ohio State here. With the way the defense is played, I think the answer is Ohio State. I would love nothing more than to say Penn State on the road. But Penn State has repeatedly told us this season who it is on offense. And it is, frankly, on you, on us, on anybody, if you decide you don't want to believe them. If you decide you don't want to believe them. There was this narrative going into that, to that Ohio State game. I keep coming back to this because I was guilty of it as well. I didn't fully buy in and say, well, they've just been holding something back the first seven weeks of the season. I didn't fully right. go there with it. I did acknowledge that was something that a lot of people out there were talking about. Um, how'd that work out? We know exactly what <laughs> Penn State is at this point. They've been screaming it all season long. I will admit the performance we saw against Indiana was far below even the lowest of expectations after that Ohio State game. But Penn State ain't it, man. They ain't, they ain't it. If they can't figure out a better solution out wide, if they can't get Drew Aller to fully uncork that beast of an arm we know he has hiding under there, that that's okay. on them. That's on them. And the answer here has got to be Ohio State. Just has to be. Okay, can I? Oh, stop it. Can I ask you? Can I ask you just because we're on it and I don't want to just jump back and forth? Penn State's obvious iceberg because they're still in it with one loss and they can still win the Big Ten. They can still go 12-1 and one and get to the college football playoff with... A, an unexpectedly crazy, impressive finish. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, Penn, uh, Penn State's got Michigan, so that's the obvious. Yeah, they iceberg. got Michigan. So can you take 37 to 52 seconds and talk to me about how Penn State might be able to, at home, suffocate Michigan? Penn State's got to make it a slop fest. They've got to make it a yeah. slop fest. And they it's almost, I think, counterintuitive, but they need to fully take away the passing game from J.J. McCarthy. And they need to make Michigan as one-dimensional as possible. Michigan has thrived being one-dimensional. So that's why it's counterintuitive. But you need to fully eliminate the passing game, which I don't think they can do. And you need to force Michigan to be exclusively a running team. Shorten the game and hope that you can get some push up front. Because I am not at all confident in their passing attack at this point. They need to find some way. If this is the identity that James Franklin wants to put out into the college football ether, that they are a running team behind their offensive line and Nick Singleton and Katron Allen. Fully commit to it, shorten the game, make it sloppy, and win close. That's the only way, the only formula, is to do just that. Because if this thing starts getting out of hand, if Michigan can pass, if they've got uh, their, their full weaponry available to them on offense, Penn State's not going to win. There's just no hope. Yeah, I mean, I uh, I almost would rather have... Penn State need to win through the air. Excuse me, Michigan need to win through the air. That like, we have the evidence that J.J. McCarthy in a couple of big games has struggled, right? At least in the uh, the playoff game against TCU with those pick sixes and didn't exactly meet the moment. He's great 
and he is maybe the, you know having one of the best two or three seasons for a quarterback this year. But if you're saying I want to force Michigan to beat me on the ground, yeah, I think that's the preferred mode for I, Michigan. I, still, I agree, and that's why I think it's counterintuitive. But I, I, yeah. I would not. After what we saw this past weekend against Indiana, it's yeah. easy to confuse the Penn State pass defense. Um, at least it was easy to confuse them. I don't know if it was a lack of focus or a bad scheme or what, but I think Michigan with their constant threat of the run, either with Blake Corum or with JJ McCarthy, their ability to use that to open up the pass makes the offense way more dangerous. They haven't had to really rely on that because they haven't played anyone that's forced them to Penn state's right. probably good enough to focus in on one aspect of that offense. And I think if they can take away the pass and make it so that Michigan is entirely one dimensional, shorten the game. That's a great way to shorten the game, provided you don't make mistakes, provided your offense, again, can find some way to get some push up front, which I'm not at all confident in. I think that's the way to win. I think the only way you win is if it's like 17 16. Okay. And here's the great news. I, you know, I, I don't think a lot of people look at that matchup and say Penn State has a real shot here. Uh, it's Michigan's first truly real game. Right? That's right. And so there is something to Michigan having a terrific idea of who they are, but not a full picture until they're able to see what they can do against a, a game like that, against an opponent like that. I want to talk about Florida State um, in our Verballer Top 12 poll just released shortly before we hit record. It does go Georgia, Michigan, and then Florida State third. Um, Florida State's in an interesting spot, man. They're in an interesting spot. I looked at the schedule. I keep looking at the schedule. And I think in true college football fan fashion, keep trying to find icebergs on here. Mm -hmm. But I think the story at the end of the day is they're probably a double-digit favorite against every team on the schedule. And if they play Louisville in the championship, Ooh. they're probably a double-digit favorite there as well. Wow. So it doesn't it does not seem to me like there's a whole lot in the way of Florida State just ripping through this thing and finishing the regular season and after the title game 13 and 0 and cruising their way into the playoff. Agree. Um Yeah, I would uh I guess I might go Florida on the road and I hate you using that, but I I think that's what I'm going to go with for Florida State here. Just because I'm not a what we've seen from TVD lately, I can't I can't get on board with Miami and I think he's just hurt in all likelihood. I think I'm going Florida at home. I think in that sort of rival, we saw it, what, a couple of years ago? Yeah, Florida at home right. won even with a, an interim coach and seemingly having their back against the wall and Florida State looking like they had much more going for it. I think that's my answer. Florida just got Is manhandled that this week by Georgia. Got manhandled I, by Georgia this past week. Okay. And Florida State almost lost to Boston College. Florida State <laughs> almost lost to Boston College. By the way, somebody suggested on Discord, and I love it, we should start referring to Boston College as the nine and three goals. Oh, I like that. I don't love highlighting the losses, but that's a number that you can get on board with here for if you're a Boston College fan. There's another thing with Florida State, too. You know what hasn't aged well? Needing to win the last second against Clemson. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, Florida State's really good. Very true. Florida State's really, really good. Florida State beat LSU. Maybe there's some steam out of that win. Maybe there's some steam out of the Clemson win. That was a hell of a football game. Either way, if you're a college football fan. Since then, it's been Virginia Tech, Syracuse, Duke, and Wake Forest. Yeah. All of those games have been runaway trains the rest of the way. This week, it's at Pitt, a healthy favorite there. Come back home against Miami. Obviously, a bit of a rivalry effect there. Who knows? North Alabama, and then they go on the road to finish things out in the swamp at, at Florida. The obvious answer is Florida, I think, at yeah. least in the regular season. Um, I'm I'm not as high on Louisville, even though I picked them to win and, and won a bet on Louisville this past week against Duke, and they look very impressive in doing so, but I think the obvious answer is Florida. It has to be. I think so. Next team. Next team's Ohio State. <laughs> you love that sound. Okay. Ohio State. So look, obviously it's Michigan. Is there another team there, though, on Ohio the, the rest of Ohio State's here where you're like, look, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to figure out the scaffolding to build up an argument. So the rest of the way, they've got Rutgers, they've got Michigan State, they've got Minnesota, and they've got Michigan. It's clearly Rutgers on the road. It's probably Rutgers on the road. This Letdown spot after, you know, network TV game, Maria Taylor on there on the sideline. 
I think it's Rutgers on the road is like the clear answer. Of the remaining games on this schedule, if you take yeah. Michigan out of it, the next best offense is Rutgers. <laughs> Rutgers, Michigan State, Minnesota are the other three teams. The next best uh, offense is Rutgers. And Rutgers has played really well as a defensive unit. Um, Ohio State this week, a very healthy favorite, but the game is on the road in Piscataway. Um, you know, we, we've made a lot of the fact that Rutgers is bowl eligible. Obviously a mm -hmm. great story. They're six and two coming into this game. They are receiving votes in the latest top 25 poll. I also think, don't they embody the spirit of this game really, really well? Our, our Titanic game. <laughs> Stop right? it. That they're sort of out of nowhere. Stop it. <laughs> out of nowhere. Rucker, the Rutgers iceberg getting in the way of this big, powerful Ohio State steam, whatever. <laughs> um, I don't know. I, I don't think Rutgers wins, but I think they embody the iceberg spirit better than Michigan. I mean, this yeah. would truly be pandemonium in Piscataway. Part duh. Yeah. Um, and I saw some folks on Twitter. I think it was our friend Bud, uh, but Elliot mentioned. You know, we haven't really seen the full chaos yet that we right. know is lurking under the surface for college football. It just happens every year this time in November. And yeah, this will be a big one. I, I don't have much faith in Michigan State at this point. Michigan State, I think, is already at the bottom. Um, Minnesota plays no offense. They play okay right. on defense, no offense to speak of. Obviously, the Michigan game's the big one, but beyond that, I just by default, I think it's got to be Rutgers, yeah. Next. Next team up. Stop it! <laughs> Washington. Okay. Washington. So Washington has the road game against Oregon State. Wazoo has sort of come back down to earth. Um, they have Oregon in a potential Pac-12 championship game. USC on the road this coming Saturday, yes? Dude, this is a tough schedule the rest of the way. It's all icebergs. It's all icebergs. They're building the whole schedule out of icebergs. Washington's final five, if it's five. USC, Utah, Oregon State, Wazoo. Wazoo's less of one, less pronounced iceberg, and potentially Oregon and Vegas. The total for the game this week, it depends where you look. I saw it at 78 and a half at one point. I think you said 77. It's upper 70s. Uh, I don't think it's going to come down a whole lot. There's a good reason to expect a lot of points there. Washington's only a four-point favorite. Looks like a fun-as-hell shootout. Despite what you think of USC, they can score points. Um... USC this week poses, I think, an obvious threat. What about Utah? Does Utah pose a threat given the way it plays defense? Yeah, I don't think they're getting through November unscathed. And so now it's a question, which is what the whole game is, like where's the actual iceberg? I think it's either USC or Oregon State. Uh, I don't think Utah travels all that well. And I think they're just – Washington's defense should perform well enough against Utah's offense. And I think Washington's own offense will succeed. So I'm not terribly worried about Utah – in that specific spot because I don't know, they're, they're beat up. They're thin. I'm going to say it's Oregon state in this moment, even though USC might be better built to handle Washington because it seems the strength of their defense is the back end. They've got some opportunistic uh, DBs, whereas the front isn't good, but Washington doesn't run all that well. So I'm going to say Oregon state in Corvallis in a sandwich spot after Utah potential body blow before the apple cup, Oregon state at in Corvallis with, Hopefully not making terrible fake field goal decisions oh my God. like they did against Arizona.